Hello, Formula One news, which is a change of direction for this channel, but it's my channel, I can do whatever I like with it, because I just wanted to talk. Um, I've once again got my trusty notepad out, made some notes, because obviously everything has gone to pot. Silly season has started before the actual season has started, which is a new one. So let's delve into things. As of time of recording, because quite likely by the time I've actually exported this, upload, edited it, uploaded it and whatnot, everything would have changed. But as of time of recording, Carlos Sainz has signed for Ferrari. Daniel Ricciardo has signed for McLaren. Sebastian Vettel has left Ferrari. He doesn't know where he's going. Might he retire? Renault don't know where they're going yet. That could change. That could change very, very quickly, come to think of it. And so what happens next is the question. And who would I have picked? Some opinions. That's all this is. This is a gentle opinion-y chat. I think what's most interesting about this and what I've definitely done, notepad, is try to evaluate what might have happened had the season already been underway. If, for example, Lewis Hamilton is leading the championship and Valtteri Bottas was a few dozen points off of him already, would Bottas have announced he's leaving Mercedes? Would Ferrari have plumped for him? What if Vettel was leading the World Drivers' Championship? What if Ferrari were just faking all their bad form in pre-season testing? Vettel's way clear. Not a chance in how he's leaving. What if Renault and McLaren found themselves behind the resurgent racing point, soon to be Aston Martin. Would Ricardo be considering McLaren in that instance? I don't think so. I think he'd be after a higher drive. But since the season hasn't been underway because of all of this, it's totally pointless and futile, but it's fun to imagine. So now we're on to who I would have picked. First on this list I've written down is Fernando Alonso. Not a chance in hell. He's a has-been, as far as I'm concerned. He's never quite lived up to the hype. Obviously he's, well, he's in sort of the top 10 for races one, but I'm too young to remember when he was winning World Drivers' Championships for Renault. All I can remember is him bullying Felipe Massa. It's not a very good reputation. And then of course, moaning about his own team and his own engine for years and years and years on end at McLaren Honda. So, uh, no, no, I can't ever see him making a return to Formula One. I think He's been and gone. He's 38 years of age, I feel. Another name I've seen these Formula One romantics online piping up. Nico Altenberg. Even less of a chance. He's got a record for the most races without ever stepping on the podium. Everyone knows that. He has consistently underperformed in many other cars where other people have stepped up. No, no, not even considering it. Not going to delve into it. No chance. First serious contender I would have thought was Sergio Perez. Now, I've got a top three here. Sergio Perez is perhaps third. Um, I think perhaps he's... It sounds weird to say because of who my number one pick is, but he's a bit old. He's never won a race. And I don't think Racing Point would risk losing him. He's got such a long contract there. And say... For example, if the season was underway, Racing Point were ahead of Ferrari, because based off of pre-season testing, I don't think that's too far-fetched. No, he's not leaving. Racing Point is his team now, isn't it? And I don't think and I don't think Ferrari would opt for someone like him, as weird as that sounds, because no doubt they probably were. Next on this list, just I've written Daniel Ricciardo. No, he's not compatible. He'd want to be number one. Charles Leclerc has made it quite clear he's there as number one after their scuffles with Vettel last year. No, and of course, if this season does go ahead and what races we do have, it'll be very interesting to see how Leclerc and Vettel go about their business and indeed how Ricardo does at Renault and how Sainz does at McLaren. But who knows? Antonio Giovinazzi is not ready. He's too inconsistent. It's quite simple. People saying he was driving really well this back end of last year, but I just think perhaps it was the other way around and Raikkonen took his foot off the pedal a bit. Because at the start of the season, or perhaps the Alfa Romeo car just in general was going backwards because at the start of the season, Raikkonen could find himself fighting for best of the rest at times and come the end of the season, they were behind the Toro Rossos. So, no, Giovinazzi, not an option. 
If Checo Perez was my third pick, my second pick would have been Carlos Sainz. His career is clearly on an upwards trajectory. He's the driver Ferrari have actually opted for. He's on his way up. He idolises Fernando Alonso. I don't know why I've written that down. It doesn't really make much of an impact, but he definitely wants to be the next big Spanish thing. He wants to make his own name for himself rather than his just being his father's son. And I don't think even with Ferrari not winning a World Drivers' Championship in... 13 years, I don't think anyone would turn down the chance to drive for a Ferrari. It's like Vettel once said, everyone is a Ferrari fan. Even the Mercedes mechanics admit they have a soft spot for Ferrari, I'm pretty sure he said once anyway. My number one pick would have been Valtteri Bottas, but obviously with the way things have gone this season, or the way things haven't gone this season, that's not happened. Um, it would have been a fresh start for Bottas, what I've written down here is a chance to prove himself again against a perhaps a more higher rated driver, but one who is developing still. Leclerc is only in his third year of F1, Lewis Hamilton is in his 14th, I think the maths is right there. Someone a bit less godlike, someone who isn't quite such a dominant figure just in the entire racing world. Valtteri Bottas right now finds himself up against a driver who is potentially, it, it's always weird to say, he is potentially debatably, perhaps maybe the greatest driver of all time, but no one can really confirm that, can they? So the Bottas would have been my pick, and after all, the last Ferrari World Drivers Champion was a Finn. Maybe that's in my head. So I said Bottas would have been my pick, but obviously I'm not Mattia Bonotto, He's gone for Carlos Sainz, so is Carlos Sainz the right choice? Um, he's definitely cheaper than Bottas would have been. Um, he's definitely cheaper than Sebastian Vettel, who has left the team. He's definitely cheaper than Daniel Ricciardo. And I think he's cheaper than Checo Perez, because Perez is on a what four or five year deal with Racing Point, soon to be Aston Martin, formerly Force India. Uh, <laughs> so I think financially, Sainz is the right choice. Driver-wise, Sainz is the right choice. He's on an upwards trajectory, whilst you could argue Ricardo's career has only gone down. Perez has sort of stagnated. Vettel and Bottas have sort of... They've always been there, but not quite in the last five, six years. So ultimately, only time will tell, which is a cop-out answer, but, you know, give it a couple years and it'll be really, really obvious whether Carlos Sainz was the right choice or not. And the question I've not seen many people answering in their videos, which of which there are many online now, is who next for Renault? Cyril Bitterbill put all his eggs into one basket with Daniel Ricciardo, now he's jumped ship for McLaren, because quite clearly McLaren are looking more promising than Renault are. Renault have been constantly going, oh, we're, we're on an upwards trend. They're not really. They're, they are starting to stagnate. So who next for Renault? Renault are famously lacking in sponsors. Could Sergio Perez bring some? No, again, they can't afford to break his contract. Even with the backing of the French government, I don't think that's going to happen. Would Fernando Alonso make the dream come back to Renault? The team he won his world championships with all those years? No. No. Sebastian Vettel? Even less. No chance. Not a hope in hell. Well, Daniel Kvyat? I don't think that's too bad a shout. He's experienced. He's got nearly 100 races under his belt. He's been in Formula 1 since he was 18, but he's sort of, what, 25, 26 now? So I think that's not a bad shout. I don't think Esteban Ocon is ready to lead a team. After all, Christian Lundgaard and Gang Zhu, they might be twicked in Formula 2 cars, and they might be twicked in virtual Grand Prix, but are they ready to join Esteban Ocon in Formula 1? I don't think Renault would plump for that, or maybe they would. Maybe they've learned that the experienced drivers who are so highly rated, like Hulkenberg and like Ricardo, aren't the right choices anymore. If Bottas stays around at Mercedes, might George Russell take a leaf out of Esteban Ocon's book, jump the Mercedes ship and join Renault? No, I don't think that's going to happen either, but it's something I've written down. Either way, silly season has begun and it's all taken so much in in the last three days for such big seats to be moving around, such high class drivers to be moving around, that no doubt by the time this video is out, Renault will have plumped to go for Robert Kubica, or Nico Hulkenberg, or Nick Heidfeld at this rate, or Davide Valsecchi. I don't know, but that's the fun of it, isn't it? Ultimately, I don't know. Should I see Daniel Kvyat going to 
Renault, possibly, possibly. Could I see Daniel Ru Ricciardo doing well at McLaren? P probably. Could I see Sebastian Vettel going to Mercedes? No. Could I see him retiring? Yes. It's not really a way to wrap up this video, other than take care and ta -ra.